is Isabel Brenner with Music Mastery, and today I'll be playing the French horn part for La Clamande, a Scottish folk song arranged by Jared Hall. After I play through this piece, I'll provide a tutorial on how to master um, your parts so that you're ready for rehearsal. Okay, here we go. So it starts with the pickup rest, so I'm just going to look at the conductor when that happens and start my counting, and it starts with three measures rest, so one, two, three, four, it keeps going, and then once I'm done with those three, I start with two pickups. <laughs> So, the first thing that I made sure that I did when I was beginning this piece was get my metronome out and you can use your phone or you can have an action metronome, either way works, or if you happen to have perfect um, tempo in your head, that'd be cool too. So, it's 66 is what it starts off with, so, nice and slow, 66, so I get that in my head. And because this piece changes uh, metronome markings a lot, it's a little hard to have the metronome going the whole time. But what you can do is do it in sections. So I say, okay, I'm going to start this first section at 66, and then once I get to the um, tempo chain at 13, when it goes to 90, then I can stop, put my metronome, and do that just for the first run through. I think that's a great um, way to utilize the metronome, just to make sure that you're accurate with that. But if not, just know that 90 is going to be a little faster than uh, 66, and then when you get to 72, that's like a little slower, but not 66. So just kind of um, eyeball it a little bit if, if you're having trouble with doing each section with a metronome like that. Um, and your conductor in your band or music group will help you with that. So 66 uh, is the beginning tempo, so there it is again. So I have that going in my head as I'm resting these first three measures. 
and I, I see, okay, I'm coming in at pianissimo, but that doesn't mean no air support. Because if I have, if I see pianissimo, I'm like, okay, so let's play quiet. And I go, oh, that's not a very good start, you know, to a piece. So I got to think, okay, quiet, but still with good tone. So I'm like, okay, get my armature set, know what a G feels like. Because if I'm like doing an armature for a really high note, even though G is kind of in the middle range, then it'll come out kind of tense, just like if I was doing a low armature, like we're down here for a G, which is the middle note, you know, then it would be a little under supported and it just wouldn't work as well. So that's why it's a good thing to do your scales and just make sure that each note, you really know your head and your lips. So I'm like, okay, G is my first note and it's pianissimo. So you can kind of experiment with that, say, okay, how quiet can I play uh, like the first note of the piece, but still sounding good. So I would go, hmm. Not bad, okay. So if that's what you can do, then from there you have to crescendo into that B flat and then into the A, which is mezzo forte. So it's gonna be like this. And then we'll decrescendo again. So you just have a lot of different crescendos and decrescendos in there. So that's a really important thing to look at. And also noting that they, in measure six, this is the first time we see it, there's an accent marking called a tenudo, and it's the line that's over that second F, and that just means that when I play that, I'm not gonna go in the accent or super short. I mean, just kinda play it nice and smooth, like legato. So instead of going like, I'm gonna make it nice and smooth. It, it might even sound like a slur bit if you're doing it really, you know, legato. Just really nice. It's just to help distinguish from the F that you had slurs to the G, just to make sure that people know there's not a note there. So looking through that, and the next spot that I'm going to look at is measure 11. Sometimes going from a C to an F is kind of hard. Um, that range of C to G in that like lower register is a little difficult in general to like have accurate, especially when you're slurring, and in this section, it is slurring. So sometimes when I'm playing C to F, you can get a little hit when you hit the F instead of just going like, oh. So to help that, since we're playing on this nice little double horn, and we have a trigger, an alternate fingering that I might use is trigger zero. So instead of going, zero then go ahead and do that but I always know that I have to chill with that and so to make that as smooth as I can that line I'm gonna go and just like nice and flowing and you can also do that when you get to measure 16 because that one is even harder right, in my opinion because D to F that's just one for both of that and unless you're super duper good at your overtone series which is those are hard um, you might be able to do it, but sometimes you get a little, do a little trip to the next note, especially if you're going up. So, see how it has a little bit of a hitch when I try to go up to the F. Well, I can do that same fingering with trigger zero. which is a very big dynamic change. So in that, especially as French horn, since we're facing the wall or whoever's behind us, um, our sound can kind of get swallowed up. So whenever I play music that has a forte, I give it a lot. Not, it still has to sound beautiful, don't get me wrong, but especially from piano to forte. So we start with that, when we started the piece with piano, you know, but then we're gonna go all the way to forte, which is, Okay, so I'm going to play those two measures, 13 and 14, just to, so you can see a little piano and forte. And just lots of air. Make sure, especially in this section, to take a really big breath because you don't want to have to take a breath in the middle of a crescendo or decrescendo because then it kind of, it's hard to come back as smooth as you could if you were just 
no breath and just keep carrying on. So, on the measure of one, so we can get tempo. For measure 13. And so that's also a good thing to put into your everyday warm up is just practicing playing as soft as you can with good tone and then as loud as you can with good tone and being able to move it, you know, at whatever the tempo may be. And then another tricky spot is when we first get into the eighth notes. So measure 19, measure 30, um, measure 35, you know, sections like that. And that you can try. If it's a little hard to slur it at first, try practicing it tongue because that's a little more accurate. So for measure 19, for example, instead of going, Especially when it's slurred, sometimes you can lose a little bit of the dynamic part because you're so focused on like, okay, make sure I hit these right notes when I'm slurring because you don't really have the tongue to go, okay, here's a note, here's a note, here's a note. You just have to like feel it out and make sure that you're on the right notes. Um, another important thing that I think is that whenever there's an accidental, so a note that isn't in the key signature. So for example, this is the key of B flat. So um, there's a B flat and an E flat in the key signature, but if you see in measure 32, all of a sudden there's an E natural. Whenever I have those accidentals in my music, um, the temp, I mean the dynamic here shouldn't be too loud. It is coming from forte, but um, I always try to push towards that because that's like a little bit, you can tell it's a change in music when you had those accidentals. So if I play the measure before that, 31, and then I'll play 32, we'll see how I do a little bit of a push. So that's whenever you're about an accidental, I'm trying to push towards that. And uh, one last thing is that at my so so, so it's always important for players to play loud when you see forte in bugle. But when you say fortissimo, the two Fs, that's when you know that you've got to go crazy with beautiful tone, of course. Um, because usually when I see my so so and it's fortissimo, um, usually that means that uh, horns have like an important part. Uh, you'll have to listen to it with the rest of the band or wherever you're playing this, but usually that means like, okay, be grand, be heroic in this section, especially with these long slurring lines. Um, so just, and you can put in, because for this, it's like just three measures straight of fortissimo, and that can be a little tiring, especially at 66, which is a little slow. Um, so if you find a way to like maybe start loud and then like, have a little bit of a, you know, a phrase going, that's great. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything in this piece. Uh, if you need more help with technique or something that wasn't covered in this tutorial, make sure to check out the fundamental videos in the library for music mastery.